Hey fellow developers, greeting from Amsterdam, the home of TomTom. Tom. I'm Massi and I'm a staff data scientist here. I'm going to tell you today about developing the intelligent vehicle assistant that TomTom Tom made. This assistant is an AI app that's built using various Azure bricks, including Azure Cosmos DB. So I hope you'll learn something about building AI apps. To set the context about the app we built, I'm going to have to tell you a little bit about who we are. Essentially, everywhere where there is location data and mapping services, there is TomTom. -tom. For you as a developer, that means, you know, we are a place to find APIs and SDKs for, you know, location tech. So if you need something like geocoding a bunch of addresses or showing some maps on a website, have a look at the developer portal. So let's get down to business. What is this AI app that we've been working on? Well, connected cars, meaning connected to the internet, they need some kind of digital cockpit software for all those nice big screens. And there's usually a lot of location tech involved. So we offer a platform to let car makers build such cockpits. And within this context, we asked ourselves, you know, what could it be to actually have a conversation with your car? And what can conversational AI mean in your car? Well, we already had some experience integrating various voice technologies into our cockpits. And so we already knew a thing or two about, you know, the current state. What we knew was, first of all, that drivers are still having some trouble understanding, you know, or interacting at least with complex in-car technologies. So if your assistant doesn't understand everything you say, you know, you're going to have to navigate some very complex menus, for instance. Next, even basic tasks sometimes can fail, you know, like finding some kind of open restaurant or, you know, maybe find, changing a, a car setting or finding an EV station. So you might recognize the feeling of not being understood by your car. Well, if you have to give pretty explicit commands, it's not quite conversational. And lastly, in principle, voice interaction should be safer than touch interactions on a screen. But, you know, if it doesn't understand you, it can lead to frustration and it actually gets worse. Now, it turns out that generative AI is a game-changing enabler to potentially solve this. So if you have access to a more conversational assistant in your car, it can probably help with this. So I'd like to see, I'd like for you to see this for yourself. So let's cut to a demo. Are there any places where I can charge my car during the game? I found a few charging stations near Soldier Field. There's a charge point station at 1410 South Museum Campus Drive, Chicago, Illinois, with four out of eight chargers available. Another charge point station is at 1201 South Prairie Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, with one out of two chargers available. The closest one is at 1410 South Museum Campus Drive. In the meantime, I heard about two new restaurants in town, Daisies and Warlords. What can you tell me about them? Daisy's is a restaurant located at 2375 North Milwaukee Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, with a TripAdvisor rating of 4.5. Warlord is an American restaurant located at 3198 North Milwaukee Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, with a TripAdvisor rating of 5.0. Both are within a reasonable distance from Soldier Field. Okay, so let's go to Warlord. You're all set to head to Warlord at 3198 North Milwaukee Avenue. The trip will take about 20 minutes, with a minor traffic delay of 2 minutes. You'll arrive with 97% battery. Enjoy your meal. I can't find the USB port to charge my phone. Can you help me? The USB ports for charging and data exchange are located in the front compartment of the central tunnel. Lift the two half lids to access the ports. There are USB ports, type A and type C, available. Okay, I hope that video 
helps you to believe that actually AI in this case is more than just hype. It's probably going to enable new kinds of experiences and new ways of building apps. And I really hope you're wondering, you know, how we got here and how we actually build AI apps. So let's get down to that. We're clearly going to need as a starting point, some kind of large language model, some form of AI to build this with. So we started out with, you know, being inspired by ChatGPT, we went for one of the GPT models. But a brain in a vet is only so useful, so we're going to need at least ears and a mouth to be able to talk to it, uh, hands-free, you know, without typing. So also, we are going to need some way of interacting with the real world. For instance, if you want to roll down your windows or you want your assistant to interact with your navigation system, it's going to need to be able to do that, so to take action in the real world. The core concept here to look out for is something called functions or tools or plugins or actions. There's lots of variants of this idea. Basically, any way for your AI to enact change in the either digital or actual world. Then, a conversation wouldn't be quite a conversation if there was no memory involved, it, because talking to a goldfish is no fun. So we need you know, some place to store memory and to manage it, especially the memory related to the conversation. So we're going to need a database. And then lastly, you know, as you might know from, for instance, using ChatGPT, the knowledge, there is some kind of knowledge cutoff. It's just based on the knowledge it has. And people often want to have the answers based on their own data. So for this, we're going to need some kind of knowledge base. Uh, we went for a dynamic approach using RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, over fine-tuning on some kind of fixed set. But let's bring in some Azure components, you know, just off the shelf as a starting point so that we're off to a good start and we can put our efforts to testing the core concept, you know, proving our concept. For the brain, we went with Azure OpenAI so that we could, you know, get a grip on the privacy part. And I think other instruction-tuned models will probably also work, you know, play around. Uh, for the ears and the mouth, just rest assured that there is some kind of Azure component, you know, there is a speech product. For the hands, well, this and wiring everything together to the brain is really where the rubber meets the road. So you will want to do the work and differentiate on building the hands and connecting them to the brain. Then the short-term memory. Well, Azure Cosmos DB is pretty much the perfect place to store your conversation state. You know? And I especially believe that adopting some kind of NoSQL database here helps because you can quickly iterate you know, in the prototyping stage, especially quickly iterate on the schema, the format that you want to store these in. Next, knowledge. So to ma manage knowledge, you're going to need some kind of search index. Even more interesting is if it's a semantic search index. So using a combination of Azure Cosmos DB and or Azure AI search, these are really the ingredients to build such a knowledge base. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So these are quite some moving parts. We didn't really add them all at once because when it really comes down to doing a proof of concept, you want to prove specific concepts. So I consider the core technical concept here, the setup of how the LLMs connect to the hands. So it's essential we validate this first. How? Well, we iterate, iterate, iterate. So starting from version zero, which is barely a version at all, we're just in a playground which is where I bet that you know, half the AI apps probably were born. So you take a prompt to test an idea and you see if it works at least once. So in our case, this was some variation of this React prompt after reading some paper. And you see if you can make this work. Well, it worked at least once. So what's the next step? Well, the next iteration was trying to tie the brain to some actual TomTom -tom hands. So, Given that this was early 2023 and Langchain 0.0.0. .0 something had just came out, we went and just adopted this because it's a great starting point. So once you've done that, we now have the brains connected with the core skills, trying to test the core concepts of what you know having a conversation in your car could mean. But to take it one step further, you know, this only works on my machine. So really, 
we want to get feedback from people around us. So it's much better if it's some kind of shareable app. So what we did is we created the cloud app um, and we let it grow up a little bit. So how we did this was we started with some kind of bicep template. This was the first time using infrastructure as code for me, but it was quite doable. And you know, this was also the way to add Cosmos DB for the memory management, because you need this. Otherwise, it all lives in memory and it will be forgotten. Now, nowadays, there is also a shortcut here. From the first step to the third step, just straight up from the playground, you can, add, you can deploy an app with memory using Azure Cosmos DB. Look out for that. Well, we didn't have that available. We wanted to go also one step further. And actually, to get to the value, you need to integrate into some kind of old or new product. So we did this. And on the way, we also had to harden a bunch of things. For instance, think of your quality assurance framework. How are you going to judge if your app is doing what it's supposed to be doing if it's based on AI? And uh, well, you can imagine that getting production ready involves a lot more of these kinds of uh, things. Usually, you know, some kind of framework will get you off the ground fast, but you have to be also willing to ditch it at some point. So we had to ditch Langchain at some point. So what we ended up with on a high level, some different integrations in the vehicle, and a large part in the cloud with all those yummy components that we talked about before. What I'd like you to take away from that is actually we put a lot of these components together as starting points, so off-the-shelf components, so that most of the energy can go to the core concepts. And for us, that was how we integrate with TomTom's location services. What types of choices did we have to make when developing an AI app? Well, I think some of the interesting choices uh, to talk about with you, considering this is about Azure Cosmos DB, are about memory and knowledge. So when it comes to memory, you know, as the conversation length grows, you're going to have to think about how to keep it small, or if you are willing to wait for you know, more latency, because as conversations get longer, most AI apps will get slower. So you're going to have to make some kinds of trade-offs here. So tips here are, for instance, using some kind of time to live, you know, or trimming. There are various techniques for this, and I think we're going to hear much more about this in the coming year. Next, knowledge. So this is where this pattern called RAG, retrieval augmented generation, comes in. Uh, tricky things here are, you know, how do you decide which documents will appear in your context? How long should they be? How do you ingest them? These are all things also I think we're going to hear much more about this year. In any case, what you should know is that for both of these topics, there is Azure Cosmos DB. So look out for words like vector search, conversation state. There's a number of guides and templates available. And if you're using a framework like Langchain or Semantic Kernel or Promptflow, I bet there's already some ready-made classes for you to start the integration. Now, what I'd like you to take away, first of all, what I find personally exciting is that you know, when you're building AI apps, this is almost like a new programming paradigm. And so there's new patterns like this rag, but also you're very often programming with natural language, something very different. Now think about how you're going to test such apps. Yeah, totally new paradigm. So the main tip I have here is you know, prototype and iterate. So test ideas early in the smallest way you can and build from there. What really can help with that, if you want it to grow up a little bit more, is to involve different cloud services so that you have some kind of shareable app you can just deploy. And finally, AI memory and knowledge management is hard, and I think this is going to be a big theme for this year. Yeah, I hope you learned something about building AI apps. Hey. <laughs>